Yeah, actually the bridge, that's a really, because when that all started to happen, um, I know all bits wrote some things about that and we had a discussion and that was great. I've been focused, like we actually have a release that we're working to get out right now. And I, I don't, I didn't actually talk to people working on it this morning, so I don't know um, exactly where it is, but I do know that like we don't, I haven't, in any reported issues on you know the PBAS that we talked about and the bridging that includes that and I'll, I'll definitely talk about this in a second and that um, Chris started uh, jumping in just to get the new hardened ethereum um, uh, contracts running and that actually so like yesterday I fixed an issue that um, would you know it brings up the newer hardened or more hardened eth bridge um on one side and i don't know really where that is on the other side today but so basically we've got a release that's on its way that's going to do a major upgrade to testnet that is all working on the pbas side and the only real question is are we going to have the older or newer more hardened eth bridge um, when this rolls out and it's you know, days, but I don't know exactly how many, but small number. And so bridges, um, the, yeah. So the main difference is this, you know, everybody likes to make a lot of like, uh, kind of complex, um, they want to create or paint a complex picture of why their bridge is so great and how it works. You know, and bridges as actually Vitalik has pointed out, they kind of boil down to, in most cases, bridges are just multi-sigs. They're just a group of people who say, oh yeah, this money can go over there, you know? And like selecting that group of people is usually what bridge technologies are about. And um, now there are, you know, if you look at like the atomic swap, by bridging, um, you know, it's it's arguably um, different than what I'm describing can be, but uh, it's also not really the same kind of thing. It's not really accepted as the same kind of thing. And so, when you look at bridging, that would enable you to send um, one currency to another system and leave it there or move it around or use it there, those technologies, uh, the ones that I am aware of and have seen are generally um, boiled down to some form of a multi-sig of people who agreed that that was uh, okay to do. So Varus actually works a little bit differently. It works differently and it, and it in fact is kind of predicated on the idea that to prove a transaction cross chain on another chain that came from you know another chain you should be able to have cryptographic proof of that transaction and its inputs and what it's doing that is as close to as good as possible if not as good as the cryptographic proof that we use on a local blockchain to prove inputs and outputs of UTXO transactions. And that's really what we worked to create. So there is, you know, notaries are witnesses to the existing rules being followed on the blockchain. And after miners and stakers have been following those rules are agreeing that you know this is in fact the correct um chain based on the rules that's it that's what they do notaries do that they don't sign transactions that are um you know money that then gets sent over to another uh chain as approved by this group that isn't how it works that's how it works on other bridges that i'm aware of in the general case 
our bridge is different in the sense that what we do is there is a process now right now we include notaries for finalization of that there is a process to just determine the agreed upon state of the blockchain that's just a thing and when we had like two years ago when we had a test net that actually was doing auto notarization it used a process with an algorithm that we we can still use but we um we want to get through all i think i mentioned this before all of the cryptographic proofs of the auto notarization just to say okay that's that's just as correct before we can actually get rid of notaries and there are some questions around civil attacks and things like that for for just agreeing on the state okay final state finalization and so um once we know that, that is the state of the blockchain that's the state of the varus chain that's the state of the ethereum chain or that's the state of the varus chain and that's the state of a pbas chain or any other chain that we're bridging to that is all we need to know every other part of the bridge sending currency sending identities sending currency definitions to make the currencies interoperable across systems and allow the flow of different currencies that you didn't anticipate at the beginning all of these things which are in the release on testnet they're proven cryptographically based on just the fact that that is the chain state and no group of anyone no group of notaries no group of signers or privileged you know dao members sign the transaction that sends currency from one chain to another it's proven cryptographically using the state the known state of the other chain that would not be accepted cross chain if it wasn't correct it's proven cryptographically that those transactions the person who sent those transactions on the other chain the miners who rolled them up the miner who imported them that on all sides people are just following the protocol and for every output even if it goes through a defi conversion there is a corresponding input there is a corresponding um conversion or not for every fee output in the native currency there is a corresponding source and so the difference is really that our bridge is a cryptographic bridge and the process of determining the root of the other chain can work in a new, in a number of different ways um, we have what we call auto notarization that happens with mining and staking and then is witnessed by notaries and that those notaries they don't do they don't process money uh transactions they simply are witnesses like real notaries in real life they just say yep i agree and then another one in another part of the world says yep i agree and they don't use like with solana oh they're using the whisper protocol who cares like really like who cares the whisper pro whatever protocol you use between people who are trying to agree on something if it isn't on the blockchain it's just another layer of complexity but okay you can do it, it if it's a network that allows them to communicate then great it's a network that allows them to communicate but all of the descriptions of these different bridges are it's just like li what we call lipstick on the pig you know um or what i've been in groups that call that you know it's like the fact is that most bridges are just a multi-sig of people saying this money can go over there and be minted as these currencies over there and we don't do that at all uh, i should there is in a centralized currency that's what we call a centralized currency you could do that actually i'm sorry we we do that all day long on centralized currencies those are what we call centralized currencies you know a dao can create a centralized currency anyone in fact it, okay that's the same as what people are doing except that the difference is that um it's a lot more straightforward you don't have to use a whisper protocol and do all sorts of you know fancy wormhole tricks to make it work with evm and everything else because all of those things just create more risk of errors and when you're working on a platform with an unlimited number of evm contracts the platform itself is not auditable it's impossible it's just 
theoretically impossible to audit because any audit you start today is going to be, you know, you're going to have a hundred more different fundamental money manipulating contracts on that protocol, you know, in the next day. So you cannot audit the protocol. And when you audit one EVM contract, it's like, what did you do? It's like a tiny little drop in the sea of all of the random programmer errors that everybody makes and they're you know adding how many contracts every day to the platform that are manipulating that are manipulating money and so what we're trying to do is take out the you know actual complex nature we're not hiding behind all these different oh it does this protocol or that protocol and by name it's just pretty simple you know you get the root of each chain that gives you a provable like with a merkle mountain range or on Ethereum, it's Patricia Trees. On Pomodo, if they did the bridge, it would be, you know, the Merkel of Merkels. You know, on Bitcoin, it would be like a Merkel of Merkels. Or we would just, we could just do a Merkel mountain range for Bitcoin quite easily. You know, the bottom line is that you just get a root of each chain. You know what kind of protocol you're dealing with and what you have to prove in order to know that there were sources of that input and that they match in the protocol. And then you just prove them and then you break it. So it's now, now it's two separate issues. One is how do you get the root of a chain? And that's where we do the, you know, the mining and the staking and everyone's involved in being incentivized with that protocol. And then you have notaries just witnessing, yep, that's correct. And they get a little, little part of it just for running because that's their motivation. They're running, they're watching the chain and they say, yep, that's the right, that's the right one. They all say it worldwide you know and they do it on the blockchain and everybody can watch it and if anyone wanted to say oh i'm going to write a monitoring program to make sure that you know the various um protocol is working exactly as it should that's actually quite easy to do and you know anyone who wanted to just say oh i'm not going to trust it if the protocol is not working as it should exactly they could just verify that it was because everything is public protocol provable cross chain provable same chain provable and the defi protocol and the pbas cross chain protocol the ethereum cross chain with various protocol they're really all the same protocol and because of the you know cross chain with ethereum on the ethereum side yes as all bits pointed out we need to use an ethereum contract because that's the only way they know how to do it so that they don't have any knowledge at the lower level of protocols that could keep things more secure. They just have this wild west at the EVM level. So, okay. But in our contracts on the Ethereum side, they don't do much. They really don't do much. They don't try to do DeFi and all of the things that, you know, they don't try to be super fancy with, you know, Bifrost bridges or, or wormhole whisper tricks or any of this stuff. They simply just take same reserve transfers in that we support on all of our uh, PBAS chains in Veris, and they send that. They validate that it's a regular trans like transaction, and they make sure that the source funds are there. And then they send that transaction over to Veris, or actually Veris uh, pulls the transactions from them, um, and anyone can do that. Because all Veris needs to know is the root, the Ethereum blockchain, and everything else is just provable. And there's no, you know, Veris doesn't take a multi-sig. If Veris, if Veris used the multi-sig model, the way that that would work is just, it would be a centralized currency run by the ID that is that currency, which can have, you know, 13 of 25 as signers. So it's a DAO. So, you know, somebody could do that too, but you as a user on the Veris platform, whether you're on the PBAS chain or the Veris chain, you know that that currency is a centralized currency and that, you know, you, you're going to need to trust, whether it's, you know, like a WBTC type currency or something, you're going to need to trust the group of people behind it to be doing everything correctly. And that's kind of where bridges are today, cross chain bridges, but they don't really just come out and say it. For many reasons, I suppose. Anyways, that's that's just a 
an overview of why we're different. And I'll say one more thing about PBAS because there we had a lot more people on than we had last time and it wasn't recorded last time. And uh, that is that when you're running on uh, PBAS chains on the new test net that's about, you know, that's going to be released in days, um, you can move the definition of one currency cross chains so that that currency can now be sent through the bridges to other chains. And so you could, for example, and this is, you know, when we get to mainnet, this is how it will work. You could, for example, define or launch a currency on a PBAS chain, not even on Varus. Send the definition to Varus, use that in Varus um, actional liquidity baskets, send that definition over to Ethereum. Well, the, the Ethereum bridge won't be able to do this in this first release, but by the time we get to mainnet, that, that is one of the priorities of getting that into the Ethereum bridge. Send it to Ethereum as an, as an ERC-20 automatic, like, automatically created ERC-20 definition. And then you can send all those currencies back and forth. So you're basically like punching holes through the bridges, but they're completely provable. They follow all the protocol and everything is provable. And the reason that we're going to be able to, not going to, well, we're doing it now on the testing. You'll be able to do it in the next few days on testnet. You'll basically be able to say, okay, I can take the Ethereum currencies that we will have through the Ethereum bridge. And I can send those to any PBAS chain and I can use them on those PBAS chains and I can send them back to Varus and I can create currencies on one PBAS chain that I, that I move the definition of that currency to Varus and to another PBAS chain. And so any currency definition, any ID definition created anywhere on the Varus network or the network of Varus compatible blockchains, PIP protocol compatible blockchain, will be able to be used on any other part of the network through this protocol. And we can start doing that in days on testnet. And I don't know of a bridge that does that, for example. But the reason that we're able to do that, and I don't even know how other, I don't even know how other uh, platforms will be able to do this without Eris IDs. They're not gonna be able to do it with what I've seen so far because the way that it works is because we have the Varus ID hierarchical namespace that allows that's also bound to currencies and bound to blockchains, which was all part of the plan. Because we're able to do this, if I have Golem.eth, I get that from you know Ethereum to Varus. That same Golem.eth, that name Golem.eth is going to be the same currency on every blockchain in the network using that currency and every part of the fractal unlimited chain protocol you know protocol network will be able to know when it receives that currency is it coming where is it coming from or did it like what chains did it go through to get there you know and and so um the interoperability is not just one system interoperating with another on the hard-coded currencies we decided to allow it to interoperate with it's really a truly interoperable you know limited chain and system interoperable blockchain network and it's not based on the kind of bridging that vitalik assumed when he said bridging isn't going to be good because he was assuming the wrong kind of bridging in his world yeah with EVM and, and the models they've got to work with and, and that they have to cram their ideas into, yeah. You know, they're not they're they're having lots of troubles. And and you know, it's easy to say these words when we're not on mainnet yet, but um so far I haven't seen any of any of the problems that I've seen on these different bridges. They're not problems that our model is susceptible to. So that's you know another reason why we're just making sure that we get this right, we release it, and it's a new model. It's provable bridging. All you need is to know that you understand the state of the other chain. It's provable bridging, and you know we I don't we took a different approach than everyone else, and uh, the IDs fit right into that to make it something that right out on testnet 
it just works it's it's really it's really beautiful and i don't you know i kind of wish that i had time to jump into that conversation about the solana bridge hack and all this stuff because but i think it's i still believe it's more valuable for us to just get this stuff done and for people like all bits who understand you know how to um how to help others understand and maybe some people now on this uh, discussion or who, who read what all bits had to say or you know would know more about how to talk about it i'm happy to answer questions if it would help people know how to talk about it and when we finish this stuff and it's on mainnet i will be in those conversations i'm not going to be so quiet but right now you know my energy is focused on getting these things done along with other people who have their energy focused on that and just finishing them and getting them released and it, it's it's going well right now it's going well um and you know the new i i really hope that people will take advantage of the new test net and, and we're going to do more on it because of what it's capable of doing so anyways i'll stop <laughs>